Thank you. <laughs> so I have the unenviable, eh, easy for me to say, unenviable task of following Yvonne and being the last guy to speak before the break. So thanks, Ewan. I, I have no ambition to see Scotland win the World Cup, but we are on time. So <laughs> here we go. Um, so I, I have been given really the opportunity to tell you about the blaze and uh, the, uh, the journey to this day ha has really been a lot longer than uh, the six months that I've been at Precision. So I'm really here to testify to the work of others um, and some of that you're going to see. But uh, my contribution to the blaze was I bled on it once and that was to get it out of the crate. Um, but a lot of this other work took place before I got to Precision. But I'm, I'm pleased and proud to uh, have the opportunity to tell you about um, one of the pieces of uh, Precision's vision of scalable microfluidic uh, manufacture of nanomedicines, and that is the blaze. So what we have done and what we have maintained from the beginning is that this is a scalable process. So the next step up from the benchtop instrument is the blaze, which will enable you to make between batch sizes of 10 mils and up to a liter of concentrated formulation and within the line dilution up to five liters. So uh, this is a rapid and cost-effective nanomedicine candidate selection clinical development tool. Um, it mirrors our GMP instrument uh, in the fact that it will have continuous flow and it does offer you the opportunity for optional inline dilution. Uh, and it uses the same proprietary microfluidic uh, chip, uh, same as the benchtop and the GMP. So in support of your preclinical tox studies, you can make larger batch volumes as you need to move into dogs or other kinds of animals or things like that. Uh, validate your processes so that you know the same formulation that you used on the benchtop will be able to scale up and go further and give you an early indication on CMC, okay? Two different cartridges here. One is the standard cartridge and the other is the inline dilution cartridge. They both fit in the instrument. You can do either one or both. You don't need to decide, okay? Um, and I would also invite you, if you're here for CRS, to go see two posters that are being presented by my colleague, Sham Garg. Uh, one on siRNA lipid nanoparticles um, and the other on polymers. So as you can see, uh, very generic slides here, but the point being is they're the same, okay? So same size, same polydispersity, whether you're making lipid nanoparticles, whether you're making polymer nanoparticles, if you made them on the bench top, they're going to come out exactly the same when you scale them up. So uh, Sham will be happy to take you through these data in much greater detail, but the point is as you scale up, as you make larger and larger patches through this process, you absolutely achieve the same metrics, okay? Um, the last thing I'm gonna invite you to do is we're gonna open those doors over there to my left and we actually have those instruments here on site and we'll be giving demonstrations so you can see them, you can ask us questions, you can see how they work in person, okay? So again, very short. I don't wanna keep anybody from the goodies or the demonstrations, but I do have one last thing I guess I'm supposed to do and that is we have another poll question. So everybody phones out, okay? And here it comes. What main type of nanoparticles do you currently work with? Mm -hmm. There we go. What do we got? We have vesicles, we have nucleic acid lipid nanoparticles. Two candidates clearly head and shoulders above the rest. Look at that, real-time tracking. None of the above. Wow. 
What else is there? <laughs> I thought we mentioned everything there could be. No polymeric micelles. All right. Very good. We are done. To the minute on time, Ewan. 